Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about this uh, TiVo Michelangelo 3D printer. Uh, full disclosure, this was sent to me by GearBest for review. And uh, you know, some a lot of times companies they send you something for review and then they say, oh and by the way you can join our affiliate program and post you know, a link to it and everything. And I said, I'm happy to post a product link to it. I'm not interested in any kind of affiliate program whatsoever. So you know if I'm gonna review something I'm gonna give it my honest take you know it's if it's garbage I'm gonna tell you it's garbage and um, luckily this is not garbage it's actually pretty pretty darn nice um, especially for around two hundred dollars um, I was really quite surprised you know when the, a lot of printers came out in the last couple of years you know and everyone was trying to make you know a printer under three hundred dollars and, and that very quickly becomes a race to the bottom um, you know in the manufacturing world so I was pretty pleasantly surprised uh, when I pulled this out of the box um, the box that was shipped in they did a great job packaging it you know it's really nice uh, uh, no absolutely no complaints there you know this was pretty easy to set up a um, couple minor quibbles whatever I'll point those out um, there's a few things that I don't like about it and I'll talk about that too alright so the uh, specs on this thing is uh, 150 millimeters cubed is your print volume uh, uses 1.75 millimeter filament uses a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and I think they have a, a 0.3 and a 0.2 millimeter nozzles available I haven't tried printing with those um, comes with an SD card comes with all the tools that you need you know for setting it up um, and they actually include a manual so and it's okay it's pretty good I mean it's not bad it can print at a max speed of 100 millimeters per second. The recommended speed is 60 millimeters per second. One thing I really like about this is for its size, it's really pretty small. I mean, it's got a pretty small footprint. Uh, it's pretty solidly constructed. You know, it's it's not lightweight. This thing is really heavy. It doesn't move around or vibrate um, on my desktop when I'm printing, um, and it's very quiet, with one exception, which I will show you. So this uses a Bowden type, you know, uh, extruder head on it. Um, so here's the drive motor here. You can see these are, it's a combination, looks like a nylon and a uh, metal gear there, you know, for pinching the cable. So you just release this guy right here to feed your cable into it. And very easy to use, easy to set up. Some people um, on the forum, there is a Michelangelo forum Facebook group, uh, which is actually pretty nice if you have any troubles or issues getting it set up. Some people have removed this top plate right here, um, and they say that has helped with print quality because this guy has a tendency, your lead screw has a tendency to vibrate a little bit. Um, so some people have pulled that off. I haven't had any need to do that, and it's been working great for me. Um, so setting this guy up so you can print directly from an SD card or you can plug a USB cable into the side and print directly from your computer and so when you set this up oh this is one slight beef the uh, rotary encoder here is you can see the holes like off center so if you push the knob all the way in it'll actually bottom out against the case it may have been just an early production sample that I got or something and maybe they fixed that um, but other than that, you know, it's pretty easy to use this guy. So you can just go, scroll through the menu. And then this is the part that's... So when you first set it up... And that is incredibly annoying. That squeak, that horrible screeching sound. So it looks like they have a little peso uh, element here that beeps. I mean, you can hear that all the way on the other side of my house. So everyone thought it was like the fire alarm, you know, like when the when the uh, fire alarm, when the battery goes, you know, inevitably in the middle of the night. Everyone thought that's what that sound was. You know, what the heck is that sound? Yeah, that is just... And why they made it that loud, I have no idea. You know, you might put some, like blue tack or you know piece of cotton you can see jamming my finger over there so 
and it only does it when you're when you're leveling the bed. So this does not have auto bed leveling. Um, so how you level this guy is you've got these little screws underneath here, and so you can adjust them like that. Um, I only had to level it once, and one thing you have to look out for when you first set this up out of the box is what I had happen was the print head here was crashing into the table and I couldn't get the bed low enough and so what I had to do is adjust the height on this limit switch right here so or on the sensor I shouldn't say switch but on this limit sensor right here um, even though it's labeled limit switch der. anyway so I just had to move that up a little bit and then I could readjust the bed height so this one screw here this little turn turn screw here for leveling the bed in this corner is kind of a bit of a pain to get to but I just use some needle nose pliers and make that makes it a little bit easier uh, other than that I've had absolutely I have no other issues uh, getting this guy set up so you can see here you can just print directly from and it's got you know, all different settings and everything that you can do in here it's pretty it's pretty darn nice and go back to the home screen. So when you power it on, you'll see the temperature raise up on this and everything. And then it'll just start printing away. Um, I had absolutely zero luck getting anything to print to the bed, so I used masking tape with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol um, on top of there, and I'll show you a little video of that working. And that worked absolutely fantastic. No issues with that whatsoever. All right, so the magic in how they got this thing down to 200, you know, right around $200 price point is in its construction. And you can see in the different drive axes, they have a basically a bearing with a, it looks like a Delrin uh, wheel around that, and that slides on this piece of aluminum extrusion. Uh, one thing that I did have a little bit of an issue with is this arm was actually loose and there's two nuts down behind here I don't know if you could see them um, in that behind that back plate that are used to tighten this arm and hold it on hold it in place and so in order to tighten those two nuts you have to remove you have to take apart this entire plate assembly here and pull everything off uh, to do that it would have been nice if they had made this back plate a little bit longer so you had access to those screws in the back side so maybe they'll do that in a, in a future version you know originally when i first looked at this i had you know some concerns about these delrin you know wheels on here how they slide in the on the lunar extrusion track but they have if you look back in here um, they have a little uh, eccentric uh, bolt head that you can adjust so you can adjust the play in here and they tell you how to do that in the instructions and everything um, so if you ever develop any slop in the future um, to a certain point you're able to adjust that out without too much trouble so here I'm printing a little sample and you can see it's pretty quiet I mean the fan is actually louder than the than the stepper motors so it has a fan on each side of the uh, extruder head there But overall, you know, I have no problem, you know, printing with this thing at night inside the house and waking up my kids or anything like that. So it's, it's pretty nice. And then here's a couple of little earlier test pieces, little test cubes. And this is printed at 0.1 millimeter resolution. And the, the quality on it is fantastic. And then this is a ripple test. It's got a little, couple little bug or boos right there, but overall, you know, for a $200 printer, this thing is, it's pretty darn impressive. All right, so there you have it. Uh, you know, I have to say for $200, you know, right about $200, um, I got to say I'm pretty impressed. Uh, you know, I did not think it would print anywhere near as good as it does for that kind of money. Um, I think for someone who's... You know, just getting started in 3D printing and doesn't want to invest all, a ton of money in a printer, I absolutely can wholeheartedly recommend it.
thumbs up. See you guys next time.